importantes en el área de teoría de continuos en los últimos años y esos problemas estaban abiertos no de hace 5 o 10 años, eran problemas de mucho tiempo y de hecho esos problemas son, varios de ellos son de los días más importantes que se tenían. Así que realmente es una personalidad, es un honor para nosotros tenerlo aquí. Este, ¿Qué más puedo decir de, de Logan? De hecho, él ganó hace cinco años el premio Mariel Entusin. Es el premio que se otorga en topología, es un premio internacional. Así que nosotros tenemos este, el agrado de tenerte aquí. Muchas gracias. So, thank you very much for being here. You are very welcome and you can start. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry that this, this talk is going to be in English uh, because I cannot speak any Spanish, uh, but hopefully you can ask questions and uh, the moderators will help to translate. Uh, this is not going to be a very advanced mathematics talk. Uh, it will just, I, I really just want to give you an idea how you can use computers to play with some math concepts and hopefully get you interested in doing that yourself. Um, I would like to ask, uh, maybe you can translate, how many of you know how to program uh, on a computer? <laughs> or just, just a little bit? <laughs> So it's a few, that's good. Uh, I encourage, hopefully when you see the talk, it will, for those of you who don't know how to program, maybe this will encourage you to give it a try and see uh, what you can do with it, how you can have some fun. <coughs> so I'm just going to say what, what I mean by a computer simulation. So first, a system is uh, just anything in the world that involves some objects, which are interacting with each other and changing over time. So this is a very general concept, very general definition. Uh, let me just give you some examples. So, for instance, uh, in cosmology or astronomy, there's a system consisting of these celestial bodies, the stars and the planets, and they move in space and they interact with each other by pulling each other by gravity. Okay, so that's an example of a system. When I say systems, something like that. Uh, another one is traffic, something I, I learned about in Mexico City, traffic. <laughs> Where the, the objects are the cars and maybe the people. Uh, they move sometimes uh, and they interact with each other by getting in the way or Crashing. Pushing, crashing each other. Uh, so that's another example of a system. Uh, storms or weather patterns, in general, just climate, is a, a good example of a, an important system uh, where you have, say, storms like hurricanes or, or more ordinary storms. Uh, they move, they grow, they shrink. Uh, and they interact with each other when they come into contact with each other or exchange air. So it's another good example of a system. Or uh, diseases. So this is another system where uh, diseases may spread or sort of diminish over time. Uh, and they interact by people making contact with each other. Okay, so something very important to be able to predict how this happens so that we can control those diseases and uh, make sure they do as little harm as possible. So those are examples of systems uh, and there are many many more than just that, it's just to give you an idea of what I mean by that. Uh, so when you have a system, you can model that system using mathematics and this is what I mean when I say a mathematical model. So this is where you take a system which is in real life, in the real world, and you create sort of a model of that using mathematical objects as idealized approximations for the real objects. So a mathematical model is a collection of ideal objects uh, and rules, mathematical rules, dictating how they interact with each other and change over time. Okay, so it's the same thing, it's just the it's, it's the same as a system, but this is a precisely formulated mathematical model of a system. So 
So a model is good for making predictions about a system. So if I go back any one of those systems, you can make a model for that system to try to make predictions about how things will change. And people do that for all of these examples. They, they have models for diseases to try to uh, direct policy about how to try to control diseases. Uh, this is a very hot topic lately with the measles virus. Uh, they have models for storms and weather patterns and climate change, also a very hot topic recently. Uh, traffic, of course, they create models to try to predict where will be problems in traffic so that they can change the roads or the lights or the timing uh, to improve the flow of traffic. And of course, with planets and stars, uh, this goes back a very long time. They have models for predicting where those planets will be at various times. So models are good for making predictions. And then when you have a prediction about what a system will do, you can exert some control over it. Uh, however, some models are better than others. So with some models, it's possible that you can calculate exactly, just using mathematics, you calculate exactly what will happen in a system with good precision. Uh, so for a simple system, like if you have a ball and you throw it in the air, you can calculate exactly the trajectory of that ball uh, just using sort of ordinary calculus. Probably you all have seen this equation or something like that uh, before. That's an example of an exact mathematics solution uh, for the behavior of a model. Sometimes that solution might involve some complex equations. Uh, in this case, it's a pretty simple one. Okay. So what else can happen? Sometimes you have a mathematical model and you can't, no matter how hard you try, you can't get a, satisfying, a satisfactory mathematical solution for the behavior of that system. So a good example of that is something called the three-body problem. Uh, do you know the three-body problem? So what this means is if you have, say, in space, three planets, okay, if you only have two planets, then you can predict exactly how they will move as they pull on each other with gravity. You can write a mathematical equation for the motion of those two planets. But if you have three planets, then this is an unsolved problem. Nobody knows how to write an equation for the motion that will result. Because those three planets, they may pull on each other and start to rotate around each other and orbit in, in very complicated ways, very difficult to predict. I'll try to show you uh, roughly what that looks like later. <coughs> so even though you can't find a mathematical solution, you still might be able to simulate the model on a computer and that's what I would like to, to show you uh, today. And the nice thing is that those computer programs can be very, very simple. Basically just as simple as the model itself is. Uh, and we'll see it as well. Okay, a third possibility is that you can't solve mathematically and you can't even simulate it very well. Those are the very complicated systems that give problems to scientists uh, even today. Uh, so a good example of that is the weather or climate system. It's very difficult to simulate or to predict that system. Uh, as you know, when you look at a prediction of what the weather will be in a couple of days, it's often wrong. And these are hard-working scientists trying to produce an accurate prediction. Well, they still can't do it. So that's just a complicated system which you can't even predict. You can't even simulate it very well. Okay, so I'm going to make a case for you. I'm just going to show you a few examples um, for the rest of the talk, a few examples of using computers to simulate some systems. And I want to, to convince you that this is a good way to play with a system, uh, to play with mathematics, to learn about a system, to demonstrate some phenomena, to teach people about it, and also for making predictions. So I'm going to give you four examples uh, of, of systems where we can uh, write a computer program to make simulations. Okay, so the first one is, uh, I'm going to, 
that the, the system I'm going to consider is a string, so I mean a, like a guitar string, right? So if you are playing a guitar, it has uh, five, no, six, six strings. I'm just going to look at one of those. Uh, and I'm going to model that as I'm going to just pretend that the string consists of finitely many particles, like this, maybe many more in a row, and those particles are connected to each other by springs. Okay, something like this. So those are particles. So those particles are going to move in time, but if you were to move, say, this one, let's say I pull it down, well then it's going to stretch these two springs, and then that spring will pull this particle towards that one, and also this one towards that one, and at the same time this spring will pull these two together, okay? and that's how the system is going to change in time. Okay, so that's my model for a string, and those particles, each one of them has a mass. <coughs> a position. And I'm going to use a vector notation, so this, this position is a coordinate in, say, two-dimensional space. So I'll represent it by a vector. Again, I'm not going to really do any significant mathematics here, but if you want to follow that part, uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, it has a velocity. I'm going to run out of room. It has an acceleration. Properties of each particle. Uh, do you know those terms? Yeah. Is it okay? So mass, position, velocity, acceleration, and force. Uh, and I'm going to use the, the familiar Newton's law, second law of motion, that tells tells me how the force is related to the acceleration. So this is how a system like this works. You look at an object and you calculate all the forces acting on that object, add them all together to get the total force on that object, and from that and this equation, you get the acceleration, which tells you the rate of change of the velocity, and the velocity tells you the rate of change of the position, and so you see how the particle will move. Okay, so how, what are the forces in this situation? The force on this particle, for instance, is coming from those two springs attached to it. So this spring will exert a force towards that particle, and at the same time, it will exert a force on that particle towards that one. And this spring will exert a force towards that particle. So we could call those maybe F1 and F2. And then the total force acting on that particle is just the sum of those two vectors, F1 plus F2. And then uh, we also have a so-called damping force. So when, these, when the string moves, it collides with the air particles, and that causes some resistance to slow down the movement of the string. Uh, so this is called the <coughs> damping force, and it's just uh, the, the damping force is just proportional to the velocity of the string. It just pushes against the direction of motion. Uh, a little bit, depending on how fast it's moving. <clears throat> okay, so that's it. This is the, the entire mathematical description of this model. And uh, I don't know if you can read that, but it's not so important because I know not all of you know how to program. But this is, this is some computer program code that I wrote. It's in Python. Uh, and this 
shows you how to implement this model on a computer. So this, this is a function which will update the acceleration, the force, the position, and the velocity of all the objects in this system, all of those particles in a row. And it's very simple. It just calculates all the forces in this part of the code according to these two laws, which I just described. So that's the code to do that. Never mind the details. It's just it's this large. And then it uh, updates the acceleration <coughs> according to this formula. It updates the velocity and the position uh, in this time step, uh, small time step dt. So again, I don't, I don't expect you to read or to understand that code, but I just want to give you the impression that it's very simple and very easy to write. It just comes naturally from the description of this model, which is using some familiar stuff for you. Okay, so I'm going to show you what that program looks like. <coughs> Okay, so here is, here is my program with all of these blue squares. They represent the particles in that string. And they are attached to each other by these little lines which represent the springs. Okay, so I can, I program this so that I can click on those and pull them around into various positions. And if I let go, then the system evolves according to those rules. They pull on each other. And it's sort of, well, it looks kind of like a real string, right? Uh, it's a bit slower. It's slowed down so that you can see uh, how that looks. 